Live, it is Tuesday, September 25th. You know how I know? Because it's my mommy's birthday, Edward. And you know whose birthday it is tomorrow? Whose? No, your birthday? How old are you going to be? <laughs> Don't play all shy. 15. 50. 15. 15. You look 15. <laughs> I can see that. 15. I'm going to be, I'm going to, okay, to, as of tomorrow, I'll be closer to 100 than I will be to 33. How old am I? 67. <laughs> Think about that. That's, that's complicated math. So, so when you turn 67, you're closer to 100 than you are to 33. By one. And Jesus died, By one. Jesus, died one. Jesus died at 33. Jesus? Yep. Jesus? Jesus died at 33. Wait, Jesus who? Jesus Cristo. Not Jesus Gomez. <laughs> no. Okay, well, I knew who anyway, Jesus Gomez, he day, died at 30. At the end of the day, look, I, it's not just about me because your mother has a birthday. A lot of people... Happy birthday to my mama! <laughs> That's all you get, Mom. Sorry. Col coloratura. You know what they say when they got that... Matura? Color, coloratura is that, is that technique in opera when, when, the, when a mezzo-soprano, she has that ability to make her, you know, that... that whoa, like this. That's it. They refer the to that as, in, in, in the opera circle, they refer to that as coloratura. Huh. You know, we've got a pretty good show here today, just to have one serious moment. Just one serious moment, one serious moment. Just one coloratura. <laughs> uh, we have Cantab Therapeutics here. We actually had Richard and Jeff from Cantab, president and CFO respectively. And these guys should be of interest because the first time they were here about, call it two months ago, stock was trading at like 70, 80 cents. Now, stock's a buck, two bucks rather, two bucks. Yeah. Two bucks. So yet another example of people well, who show up on this show. Making yesterday, we spent a lot of time on Alifia talking about- You did. And, and it was through the ban and blah, blah, blah. I know. Only put up another 80 cents today. No problem. Yes. 390. And what was the last thing I was trying to get you to tell me to do tomorrow? Buy some stock. <laughs> exactly. And I said, I'd wait for a pullback. <laughs> oh, well, how long are you going to wait for? Guess what? You got a better chance of getting picked up uh, by the president, uh, you know, driving a car. Can you imagine if you stopped the car and the president was driving? I don't think they'd let the president drive. And plus, I think the president we got right now would probably... Uh, yeah, put him in the ditch. Yeah, well, who would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't end well, put it that way. He'd probably take credit for the highway and then, uh, you know, look at that, Golden Ridge, I'm up a I, I got a, I got... Oh, you smart shopper, you. You, you uh, tickled, you, put, you went on in the bid there and took out some paper. I, I saw an opportunity. Paper. I think that's you know, the bottom. You know who's really, uh, really knowledgeable about Pape? Pape? Yeah. Pape and Danforth? No, Gordon Pape. Gordon Pape? Yeah. Does he smoke a pipe? No, but Pape is a short form for Papier. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, that's what we're all into this morning. Boy, right? you're really witty today. We want all some, of these we want subtle some, references. Yeah, yeah. A little, little bit of Pape. fuck? A little bit of Pape. Jesus Christ. I'm Jeez. not used to Okay, this. so look at... And the other one, JWC up a penny. I think, I think I get a sense, and this is just on a pattern. Okay. High Hampton looks like it's getting ready for a move. Guess what else I bought today? I bought High Hampton. <laughs> what did, what did I buy? What, what did, did I you buy? buy? What did you buy? I didn't buy anything. <laughs> Forehead. See, this is what happens when you crawl out of bed at one in the afternoon. By the time you've got your yeah, your two your shit on, together, your fucking yeah, Marcus almost closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that boy. That's nice to have a full head of hair, eh, James? What do you think? I don't know. I got, no, I got a two pay. Yeah, look at, I got a three pay. <laughs> you got a two pay? If I you, got a three pay. That's a three pay. You better ask for your money I want, back. I want a. You better ask for a refund. I want a one pay. A I want one. a. I want a PayPal. Most of the two pays I know of are one pays. All right. PayPal. That's okay. Enough. That's enough, Ed. Let's have some serious conversation okay. here. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to pull up the... Uh, well, I think the first thing I should do is... Wait. Look, a little bit disorganized here. Don't mind me. Let's pull up the uh, small cap cannabis index here. And we're going to look at it today in the Quote Media, Quote Stream Pro desktop. And uh, is my NDI functioning? No, there's no NDI. How can anybody see anything with no NDI? You can't. That's the simple answer. Who are you calling a can't? What? 
can't what? What can't you do, Ed? I, uh, you know. Who you, <laughs> what? Who you calling a can't? What can't you do? There's things you can do and there's things you can't do, even on this show. And it's fine if you can't. Organogram. Look cheap yesterday at 6.95. Ooh, it's a bargain at 6.84. Oh yeah, so there was my fundamental analysis demonstrating yet again how useless that can be. Huh? Go figure. Well, where's the uh, Where's the chart here? We got my NDI all bolted on, and look at that. Woo! Yeah, wee! Yeah. Oops! Don't, Ooh, wee. don't want everybody to see my stockhouse window. Then they'll see what I'm buying. Selling, buying, selling, buying. Na namaste. Namaste. Took a, li took a little hit on the chin today. Waterfall ticker. Waterfall ticker. Little tickler. What, what's he down? What's it, what's it down? Look at SNN. Remember, we had a gentleman in here from the West Coast tell yeah, us yeah. that he thought Seneva was, was the, the best, best yeah. buy on the board. Best in the buy on the board. Space, best buy on the board. Which completely threw us for a loop. Uh, yeah. What else is going on here? Look at the, the hip is looking. Well, I'll tell you what's going on. I'll, I, I, I noticed the three big boys in Canada. At least the three traditional big boys, and I'm talking. We're not on that index, Ed. Weed. No, Here, we're not. I'll put us on that index. There we go. There we go. Weed. A B A C B and. Uh, you know what? Let's go look I, at. Oh, look at no! I, I was wrong. Afria is down. Afria is Afria, down. Afria, uh, but A C B up nicely again, up five percent. Yeah, our friend Mac Daddy Market Making Donnie Greco told me if it goes through 12 bucks, he thinks it's going to... Maybe I shouldn't tell everybody that. He said he's going to buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Sell it. Sell buy it. it. Buy it. Just buy it. Buy it. Buy them up. Sell it. Buy them up. Buy it and sell it later. Sell it later. Buy it. Buy it now. Buy it in the morning. And put it away. Sell it. Or store it. Aben. Resources. Got hind grinded. Look at that. Down seven. Down seven, but that's all the way down to 21 now. This is another bargain gold, in the gold, making. Golden and uh, Aven are fighting it out. Look at Aden. They still got the wrong name. That's Chiron. Aden cap is Chiron. I wrote to uh, Quote Media and told them that they had an error in their yeah. system, and they responded to let me know that they'd received my request, but clearly they haven't done anything about it. That's, that's, that's a two-step. Should we call them right now on the show and give them shit? No. No? How would you give it to the shit? Would you give him shit? Would you give it to him with a shovel? I'd put it on the end of a stick and ram it up their boo -boo. nostrils. So, Ed, you going to see Elton John tonight in Toronto here? No, but I'm going to hear all about it because I know <laughs> someone that's going. <laughs> I'm going to experience Elton John vicariously. Yes, yes. Benny and the Jets. Hey, so, soft on the, on the bongos the bongo gym. Bungle Jim. Bungle Jim. Look, look at, look at canopy growth up a buck fifty-five. Tilray. Riviera. 112. Back back into, well, some semblance of its former yeah, self. I don't know. I don't know if that's uh... Now do you think what do you think the chances are that Tilray goes back to like the fourteen to twenty dollar range where I think it No. Well that's that's a very good question. I mean, because you know, once the stock creates so much hype and and excitement, and then creates right away so much heartbreak and misery. Yeah, there tends to be a vindictive effect in the marketplace where it's like, you know what, you dirty rat, you laid me out. Now you're going to eat lead. And next thing you know, the <laughs> stock is never the same, and people just avoid it because it hurt them. Ouch. Yeah, it's like you know, you know what? What I've decided that I'm going to try to. Get into get into the scheme, get into the play of things here, hey. and show maybe a little bit more, Whoa. a little more face. Whoa, that's scary. That was a little tip. That's bold. That's uh, aggressive. Yeah, you know, you know the Tilray. Look, look, the Tilray here is bouncing around 112. You paid say anything north of 200. You're probably thinking, man, the, the odds of this coming back to 200. There, well, there's two, two, two possibilities, slim and none. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, well, wait a sec. What do you mean? The hype and algo machine that took it to 300 in the first place could not resurrect itself on this dirty plane and once again live to fight the noble fight and break through to yeah. the break on through to, to the, the other side. side. Break on through. Break, break on, on through. through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, 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 I wonder do, if I wonder if do, the do. people I wonder if the people appreciate 
or just sort of cringe every time we break into song. Like, oh, fuck, here they go again. They can't. Well, I've noticed that, that uh, cotton batten sales are up dramatically, and I've noticed a lot of our viewers have got a lot of cotton batten is jammed in their ears. What do you think about that? Boy, there's, that's, a, that's a rich comic trough from which I would love to eat. However, I'm going to give it a pass because you have as the subject matter our audience, which, in case I made some kind of faux pas at the end of the show yesterday and gave the impression yeah. that I did not highly value the audience, I value this audience so highly yeah. that I would do almost anything and say almost anything to keep why, you going. Why, uh, <laughs> let me ask you a question here, like, and I'm learning here. Yeah. Why are some of the, there's some white, Letters. Yeah. There's some green letters and red letters. So you can tell the difference. So the red ones, that that's to make to show them that they're not green no, or white. No, the uh, the white is if there's no change from the last trade. order, last trade, and yeah. red is if it went down. Green is one went up. Okay. Really? I'm telling you that at this late date in life. Is this because you've forgotten such elementary shit, or is it because you're actually prematurely senile? Prematurely. Sen senile, senile. Okay. Senile. Okay. Senile. Well, let's let's look at the chart of uh, okay. High Hampton. You want to get on your High Hampton, do you? Yeah, I want. I want advanced. Moving into the High Hampton mode. Warp factor nine. See you next. Okay. I bought. Uh, I bought, bought hundred thousand shares whoa. of this at fifty-five. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa! That's sixty-one, sixty-two. Yeah. 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 I just, you know, I hate. Yeah, big things happen with high. You handed. know what I like here? Let's big mover, big mover, okay, big mover, big mover. BM, big mover, big mover, big mover. <laughs> this one's been. What since other? What else comes to mind when you think of BM? Just say. Anyway, not, let's not go. Biometrics. Mm. Bagels and mayonnaise. Uh. <laughs> Bone marrow. You know how they have mm. movements in, in, in the symphony. Movements in the symphony, bowel movements. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, bowel movements. What's in wrong the with symphony, you, anyway? What okay. kind of a Wait, look at this? Nice little basing action here, and and you know, and it and it and all of a sudden, up ten percent. There's a nice little action. Point. So so what? You're gonna not gonna try to sell me on the idea that the Bollinger Band, which re looks remarkably like a large colon, we saw, but narrowed. We, yeah, it's narrow. And we saw it try to go here, but then it wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. Then we came down here. We, we This is sideways action. Now, this little, we got a little turn up here. Turn little up. Turn up. Now there's carrots and the celery, and there's the turnips. <laughs> so we're having a turn up today. Here. Well, what do you got there, Ed? You know, this is my yo-yo. You, know, you should have that in your pocket. You're going <laughs> to. You're gonna lose that thing one day. It looks like you. Yeah. What do you got there? What do I got? What do I got? Okay, so look at. I'm just saying, now can we discern some, okay, big volume day here, Yeah. okay, and then nothing, 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 but do you get the sense we get a little more volume, volume in here? Interesting. Uh, I just well, wonder if, if we're going to, it's going to be some news out here. There's you news you know what? I think there's news coming. I mean, it, it looks to me like there's news coming. I, I, I'll tell you, that's the kind of chart, because you got, you got, you got three months of base building here. Yeah. And, and, and usually when these things, and we've seen it now on several occasions, they just peep out of their little previous range and there's a 40 cent move. Careful, Ed, I haven't million. finished buying this Five thing million. yet. Why can't you please say, it looks like it's gonna fall off a cliff and everybody should sell. Er, there's Jesus. a couple of big buds <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, there. Wait a minute. Fill those bits. What if I stand in my head and look at the chart? Will it look different? It will. It'll look uh, re oh, in reverse. Oh, Jesus, this looks like it's gonna fall. Is that you standing on your head? Boy, that was fragile. All right, all right. <laughs> you know what? I think everybody would like to see me stand in my head, but. My head doesn't have feet. If you would like to see Ed stand on his head, just say so in the comments no, boxes. No, no. And if there's a sufficient number, we shall force Ed onto his head. We shall force head force onto head? his head. <laughs> force, force Ed. Force Ed. Is that as opposed to the four on the floor? I, enough, enough said here. This, this baby looks like it's getting ready to launch. Right, getting ready to rumble. You think? Getting ready to rumble! You know what? I just had a chat with uh, Richard Goldstein and Jeff Runwick from uh, Cantab, and they were very, very enlightening. They brought 
pills, of which I ate one, and now I'm fucked. Here they are. Well, welcome back. My guests in this segment are Jeff Renwick, CEO, and Richard Goldstein, CFO of Cantab Therapeutics Limited, trading on the CSE under the symbol PILL. That's P-I-L-L, -L, if you haven't already figured that out. Gentlemen, <laughs> welcome back. Yeah, thanks, James. This Thank is, you. This is the second conversation that we've had. In the last conversation we had, your stock was about half the price that it is today. So what has happened to create this doubling of your valuation in such a short period of time? I think uh, several things uh, have happened. Uh, the stock, if, if I'm correct, actually was even less than a dollar when we were last, or when Jeff was last on the show. But right. um, the reality is we did um, one thing really, really well and one thing really, really bad, and they were the same thing. Uh, oh. We raised $5 million on our own pretty much at a dollar, uh, a sub receipt, if you will, a dollar a share. And at the same time, uh, we raised $5 million on our own, meaning that we didn't go out on any road shows and tours. And, ah. and frankly, uh, we were probably not very well known in the marketplace out of the gate. We've tried to enhance that by um, retaining uh, a variety of people, right. including yourself. Right. <laughs> and uh, more importantly, uh, we did a great job uh, with FSD finally getting that transaction closed, and that's well under construction. And I think people are seeing, hey, these guys truly are uh, a game changer uh, in the medicinal uh, marijuana marketplace. Yeah, you bet. Well, so give us an overview and a reminder of what the whole business is all about again. Yeah, basically, James, we, uh, we take the cannabis resins and we do a little bit of uh, chemistry on it. Um, we get it in a pill format and uh, we do the clinical studies and, and uh, get it moving forward in the marketplace. Mm. So basically, a new way to get high. That's true. <laughs> or, well, <laughs> manage your pain. We treat uh, uh, illnesses and conditions, we yeah. prefer to say, absolutely. Uh, you know, as you know, bud and, and oil are the approved uh, delivery methods today, and yeah. we're hopeful um, in the not too distant future that Health Canada, you know, will uh, approve uh, hard tablets as a, as an oral dose delivery mechanism under the current ACMPR rules. Yeah. So now we've got some companies have already done soft gels, and right. uh, I mean, what what is the significance of having a hard tablet relative to a soft gel? Well, basically, a hard tablet protects the cannabinoids from degradation, and um, uh, it's a little bit easier to deal with, and there's better stability on it. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So. What point are you at in the path to profitability at this point? Well, profitability, I guess, first you have to have revenue, and we have had, um, we have had some revenue. Details, uh, details. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've generated a couple of uh, license fees uh, through our uh, deal with Emblem, and, and there are several more uh, still to collect on. But um, true revenue uh, through product sales will be uh, likely in 2019. We have two areas that we're pursuing. One is the THC. Uh, uh, medical side, if you will, euphoric, uh, you know, get the buzz, deal with oh, whatever it is you're doing. Oh, you don't have to explain it to me, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but the other side, and, and we might see revenue out of that side even faster, is uh, the CBD side, which is, you know, all the benefits of, um, of the cannabis plant and or uh, uh, industrial hemp uh, without the THC, without the euphoria. Mm. And uh, actually, uh, at Cantab, we do have a uh, Health uh, Canada approval NPN number for hemp seed oil in a capsule. Mm. And so we could be on the shelves generating revenue right now, but you know, truthfully, hemp seed oil really isn't much of, uh, of a CBD carrier. Uh, and, and so I don't want to call it snake oil for those of you out there who are selling it, but <laughs> at the same time, if your focus truly is on CBD, mm. you want full spectrum oil. Really? And, and uh, the government has, uh, in the latest rules, approved uh, grow from uh, this summer crop 2018 to be used in full spectrum uh, hemp oil, which we will also encapsulate and tablet and market. So is that suggesting that hemp, the hemp plant is not a good source for broad spectrum cannabinoids? The seed isn't. The and up right. until now, only the seed was allowed. Oh. You couldn't use the stalk and the flowers. Oh, I see. And, and oh, so, okay. um, uh, so yeah, post legalization, they'll be able to use the full flower, the full plant, root and all. Root and all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Interesting. Do you do you have any uh, sense that the evolution of these companies that are producing uh, cannabinoids through biosynthetic methods represents any kind of a threat to the long-term viability of a business that focuses on growing the plant? Well, interesting you say that because we've had a lot of people um, uh, coming up to us over the last couple of months uh, offering different methods in, in uh, producing CBD. 
One of them was through LJ, which would be a single molecule CBD, which was very interesting because from the pharma business, that's typically how you would derive one of your products that you worked with, not from a, a natural plant or not a plant with several molecules in it, uh, but having one pure molecule. So as we go down the road in the pharmaceuticals and we get a little bit more technical, you're going to see um, some of these new methods of producing CBD come up. Yeah, you bet. I, I would just add to that too. Uh, uh, you know, for, for those companies, that is another grow, you know, method, if you will. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, whether you grow it in plant or grow it in, you know, uh, in, a, in a laboratory, really, it, it, if it's more effective cost-wise, that would be great. But at the end of the day, you have to have the delivery mechanism, irrespective of how you came out with the CBD mm -hmm. through algae or through plant. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we have the delivery mechanism, the best delivery mechanism, right. we believe. Mm -hmm. I think one of, one of the reasons why that we've had a little success recently is I think a lot of people are becoming aware that our cannabis tablet is a global product. We don't need to acquire real estate in South America or in Portugal or any of these places. We can ship tablets around the world from our plant that we're building out in Coburg with FSD Pharma. Hmm, interesting. So will you be uh, participating in the recreational market with these pills? Well, um, we like to call it adult use segment uh, in our in our industry. Uh, you can call uh, it whatever you want. <laughs> well, right now, the maximum dose is 10 milligrams by Health Canada, and truth be known, uh, um, that's not a lot of uh, of drug at the end of the day. And so, if you're really just looking to get high, we're probably not the solution for you. If you ended up taking you know three or four tablets, then maybe we are. Uh, it's not our focus. Um, edibles, as they become available, uh, uh, could be an area. Uh, you know where people will get access uh, on on a recreational side, and even that's obviously still at least a year away. Uh, our focus, I think, for now, will just be on the medical side and right. really trying to help people. Right. Okay. So that's the low hanging fruit for you guys. Absolutely. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in another quarter's time and see where your stock price yeah. is yeah. then, because if it keeps going, great. <laughs> Thank you, James. Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for joining. Thank you yeah. for your time. Yeah. Cantab. Drugs as I'd like to comment, pills. I'd like to comment, all cannabis will in the future will do, be delivered by a hard pill. Nah. No? Not all. What did he say? Well, he's saying that... Wait a minute now, were we watching? Uh, well, I actually, so I, did, I, did, I actually talked to the guy, and he's basically saying that in terms of using all the cannabis in a dose of cannabinoids in any form, Pill delivery is one of the best because you can maximize and use all of the molecules. I think that's probably a fair statement. Hence, hence the pharma industry, lots of pills in the pharma industry. You notice that? Lots of pills in the pharma industry? Yeah. That's a, that's a great observation. It's Ed. amazing how I just, I, 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 wow. I, I hone in, Oof. I hone in on the big picture. On the most relevant thing. Just like that. You, you're, you're amazing. I know. I know. You know what else I'm thinking what here as thinking I as I sit here? I'm Sounding thinking prophetic. I see three words over there huh? and uh. Midas letter live. I'm thinking, why don't we go with Midas letter love? Midas letter love. Yeah. Oh. That what has you, quite a ring to it. Yeah, like that could, you know. Oh. What are you thinking? I like it. What are you thinking? I'm thinking Midas Letter Love. So we changed the name of the show to Midas Letter Love. And maybe Go change the theme completely, and maybe we'll do a something at three in the morning instead and of three. And I'll stop wearing a tablecloth for a shirt, and you'll stop wearing a moving blanket. <laughs> and welcome. It's three in the morning. It's and time for my letter. Love. But one of us has got to talk like this, baby. Yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. Well, you know what? Markets will be closed. Everybody will be in bed. We'll have like ten well, people well, on the no, show. No viewers. <laughs> This is, this is for after we're big and famous. We become addicted to coke and quaaludes and pills and booze. And, and of course, look at, look at Med Men up. down 26 again. Med Men down 26 again. Med Men, let's pull up a chart of Med Men. What do you say? Let's do it. Hold on. Let's do it. Hold on. Let's do it. Hold on. <laughs> Jeez. Hold on. First, I got to close. Hold on. Let's do it. First, I got to hold on. Let's do it. <laughs> I got to close up my accounts. <laughs> okay, what are you going to do now? Close, okay. close your accounts. We want to look at, so, CanTab. Symbol? What was the symbol on CanTab? What was the ticker? Oh, it's pill. Sorry, it's pill. Duh. What an idiot I am. Pill, pill. is the symbol. So, Pilda. first, we're going to look at pill. Pilda. Oops, Pilda. Pilda is related to Hilda. Pilda is related to Hilda. So, here's the chart. 
Oh, NDI, uh-oh, emergency, emergency, NDI, not responding. Okay, here we go, NDI is up. Let's go back and look at our, nope, oh, there we go. Pill, so this is, look, Ed, this is where they came, the look, why is my mouse way the hell over there when I'm looking at it over here on this thing? Anyways, so never Your mind mouse. mouse. My mouse, my mouse house. The first time these guys came to the show, exactly, What's that? Two weeks ago? September 4th. No, it was before that. It was back here. August 13th. Yeah. And, and can I just again, you see, you see what I'm getting at here? That first move doesn't always happen, but that's a good, a good place to start. You get something breaking out of a pattern, as we saw there, and that, that was back to the, hearkening back to the High Hampton. But look, let's just say, you know what, I'm going to take a shot here, maybe just buy a million shares. 87, there's a million bucks. And then there your pocket's gone. But now what are you going to do? Gonna now what are you going to do? Now what are you going to do? Well, ah. now, 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 you know, you know what? Now we look for the next one. Maybe it's High Hampton. But what if it's just the first step in a, in a what, path? Okay, let's put up High Hampton bucks. again. I want to see what it's at. Holy cow. I'm, I'm kind of... What, do you own the stock or something? No. Are you along the stock? No. Oh, I am. No. <laughs> I am as of today, but I only got 100,000 shares. What, what have we got here? <laughs> Open, high, low... Close. That's Monday. Ooh, What's what, what about what? Tuesday? Put up Tuesday. Well, this is actually every day. No, but what's what's the last price here? Here uh, on today. The, yeah. There's last at sixty one, up five cents okay. on six hundred fifty one. Okay. Well, that, that, I'm going to say this thing's if it closes in here, I'm, I'm saying it's a breakout. It's a breakout. Bit of a breakout. I mean, if yeah. it closes high. Well, sixty one. I mean, this thing was ninety cents. Come on. Yeah. You, uh, did look at, you look at our X row here. Ooh, X rated down a penny to twenty eight. That we need to adjust that uh, ticker because X row's out of the picture now. Really? Yeah, took the loss, wrote it off, blew it out. Yeah, well, we can get back in. Capital maybe, for maybe better get, opportunities. Get back in. I have the attention span of a gnat when it comes to the marketplace. ACB's Edward. backing off. It was up to thirteen and change. Yeah. I wonder what Donnie would say to that. I know what he's going to say. He's you know what he? Say, you know what he'd say? Going to twenty bucks. Using my name, I give you what. <laughs> It's right. I didn't want to be on your stupid show in the yeah. first place. Now you're dragging me on there by reference. Oh, well, that's what happens when you hang out with a bunch of guys who talk for a living on a camera. Um, what else we got, Ed? You know, uh, Afria's down 47 Never mind cents. Afria. Let's talk about stocks we own. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I got to, I got to, I got to, I've got to talk about Juju. Because Juju is down a penny today. Just a penny? Yeah. I think, uh, I think what they're, uh, well, so they announced that deal with Solus Distribution this morning. Did you catch that interview? No, because we haven't run it yet. Here it is, Steve Gormley, yet again. Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter. Ah, my guest in this segment is Steve Gormley. He's the CEO of International Canada Brands, trading on the CSC under the symbol Juju, J-U-J-U. Full disclosure, I am ultra pregnant this deal. That's all I have to say. No further disclosures forthcoming. Steve, welcome back. I guess that makes me the baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Well, so, a couple of great announcements this week. The, the uh, La Vida Verde deal. Yes. Or that was last week, rather. And this well, week. I'm, I'm so excited about the La Vida Verde deal. The principals in that deal, the management team, is just best of breed. I've known Bryce Berriasa, who's one of the founders for six years now. Um, I've audited his businesses. He has one of the best reputations in the industry and he's a powerhouse in the Northern California market. Hmm. He has an incredible operation out of Santa Cruz and a world-class staff. He has some of the most interesting regional brands with an incredibly strong following and so we at International Canna Brands couldn't be more elated with, with the closure of the definitive agreement and we will be executing against uh, the agreement um, by November 1st. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just excited to be moving forward with Bryce and with the whole team at La Vida Verde. That's okay, awesome, congratulations thank on you. that. Thank you, And then today's press release. Yes, I'm also happy to announce that uh, you know, in the 60 some odd days since I've come on board and have brought my team, 
we have really turned things around at Juju Royal. And as you saw this morning, we announced a pretty robust distribution deal with Solstice uh, to, dis to distribute Juju Royal products in the Washington state market, which is a very important market from our perspective and really gives us a footprint uh, on the West Coast. Hmm. And as we look to partner in other states, this agreement, this partnership will serve as the template for what we hope will eventually be a franchisable mo model across right. the U.S. Okay, and so you've now adopted a rate of execution that sort of is a lot different from what it's been the last few months. Is this what we're to expect going forward into the next year? Absolutely. So, James, as you know, over the past 60 days, we've architected the epitome of what we consider to be a true turnaround story. This stock was lingering uh, below uh, 10 cents for quite some time. The management team that had been in place before, um, while they worked very hard, were not able to get the mission executed. And so when our team came on board 60 days ago, we came on with the intention of making this the ultimate comeback story. And mm -hmm. as an American, you know, we love comeback stories. Oh, yeah. Love <laughs> Let's, the underdog. Yeah, take a look at what happened with uh, Tiger Woods over last yeah, weekend. Exactly. Right? And you needn't look any further than that to recognize how the American market responds right. to a comeback story and clearly how the Canadian market responds. Because since we've come on board, we effectuated a major restructuring of the company, as you know. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest obstacle to the company's success was the preferred share structure. Right. You know, the market just didn't know what the overhang was going to be. Mm -hmm. And so when we eliminated the preferred share structure and did a forced conversion and got the preferred shareholders to agree to a nine to one rollback for in the interest of the company, and we returned close to 90 million shares to, register, to uh, Treasury, that fundamentally shifted the landscape for us. Yeah. And that was the platform around which we were able to raise the capital uh, required to continue to execute against the La Vida Verde transaction. But also, um, it was the precursor to the position we took in Riotus, the 25% position. So in the past 60 days, we've acquired 25% of Riotus. We've signed a definitive agreement to acquire 51% of La Vida Verde. We restructured the company comprehensively, and we executed, uh, we, we, we've executed against our mission. And now we're turning Juju Royal around. And we're excited to uh, see where sales goes and growth goes over the next quarter. We're, we've, we've repackaged uh, a lot of the products. Um, we were also very proud uh, to announce in September that our products had won some awards. Um, and so we're really bullish on the future. And as we look forward to acquiring more unique solid brands in the space that are synergistic and accretive to our strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're excited to grow a real business here that's predicated on EBITDA, predicated on earnings. Okay. So is your objective then to drive the value of the per share price higher so that you can more readily use the company's equity as currency? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think it's outrageous to sit here and tell you that I am committed to seeing this become a $10 stock. I am putting everything I have in it and I know my whole team is behind this. We are focusing on being the leading company in the space when it comes to profitability. We believe that there is no substitute for fundamentals, James. Mm -hmm. That this incredible exuberance we've had this, this, this hype that we're enjoying in the market presently, a lot of it is a function of October 17th. Right. A lot of it is simply a function of being in cannabis. Mm -hmm. But we know when the dust settles that international cannabis brands will stand tall based on its fundamentals, hmm. based on its profitability, based on its earnings per share. Sure. We know that our shareholders will be the beneficiary of a hard-fought battle to create a business 
that's a real business, not a business based on hype. Okay. Um, the La Vida Verde uh, relationship, how does, how does that make the company, uh, drive the company towards profitability? So La Vida Verde is a profitable bu business to begin with. It's really in the management team. James, one of the criteria for the businesses that we're targeting for acquisition is the management team itself. Now, you have to realize that any management team that's worth its salt got its start in the black market. That's a very particular personality type, right? Yeah. And so these are entrepreneurs who figured out how to survive, then figured out how to thrive. And now that they've been lawfully operating for a long period of time, they pay their taxes, they run real businesses, they have auditable financials, now they're looking to legitimize. And so what the Canadian public market provides for the U.S. entrepreneur in cannabis, for the profitable U.S. entrepreneur who is a real business, is the opportunity to benefit from the liquidity in the Canadian market. It's an opportunity to grow and scale business and enterprise value and shareholder value that just doesn't exist on the OTC, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You don't see these kinds of scores on the OTC. I just don't believe the US market, heavy with the reality of federal prohibition, is the right market for these world-class entrepreneurs. I think it's Canada. Sure. And you know, as an American, um, running a Canadian public company, doing business in America, I'd love to be able to say that there's an opportunity in the American stock market for cannabis companies, but sure. the risks are too high. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a very aggressive and music to my ears as a shareholder, obviously, but I have to take the other side of the position and say, what could go wrong with all of this? It sounds so great, but what could possibly go wrong? Well, it's cannabis, right? And whether you're in the Canadian market or whether you're in the US market or in the EU, Cannabis is fraught with a, a variety of different risks that other businesses don't have. Cannabis investment is not for the weak at heart. It's not for a conservative investor. I, I tell people all the time who come into cannabis, don't invest money that you're not willing to lose mm -hmm. because a variety of different things could go wrong, especially in the United States. It's still federally prohibited. Yeah. It's still considered a Schedule One Class A narcotic in the U.S., which those of us who are advocates and who are in the business find ludicrous. But the reality is, as slim a chance as that is, it exists. Now, do we believe that with 30 U.S. states uh, on board, with more than two-thirds of Americans living in a market with access to legal cannabis, will the U.S. government go against something that's so popular on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that that's the case. But none of us have a crystal ball. Right. Um, and while Donald Trump, among the 17 candidates on the, political, on the Republican side of the equation, he had the second highest rating from the DPA, which is the Drug Policy Alliance. It's a watchdog in the states. He's had some very progressive things to say about marijuana. And many of us in the states believe that this is an issue he'd like to snatch from the Democrats should he make it to the 2020 cycle. Wow, that's impressive. So then, is the timeline to federal deprohibition something that you, that you could invest in? It, 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 it's tough. I think that there are, as, for as many entrepreneurs and as many people as there are playing in the cannabis space, that's how many different opinions exist on the timeline for the uh, repeal of prohibition in the U.S. market. I think realistically, it's something that will occur in the next administration, whether that administration be Republican, um, unless of course Mike Pence gets in, in which case there would probably be uh, a sluggish reaction to the progress being made in the U.S. But I genuinely believe that this, you know, the Republican wing of uh, the party, the, the, the libertarian wing of the Republican Party, so strongly supports uh, marijuana. I mean, Rand Paul, uh, a, a Republican, 
found, uh, was the co-author of the banking bill that's on the floor uh, of, of the uh, House right now. That would allow federal banking. Yeah, I think if, if, if I had to guess, what I would say <laughs> is that the likelihood will be that the drug is rescheduled first. They'll bring it down to Schedule Two, which would put it on par with oxycodone, for example, right? Highly regulated, but still legal. But that would bring the banks and investment banks, and that would bring all the financial institutions off the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And that would that will be a seismic shift in the U.S. market. You bet. When but do make, you see that happening? I, I I don't see it sooner than 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 four years. Oh um, wow! Two to four years at okay. the at most. Um, <laughs> It, it depends. It's all a crapshoot. Of course, it could all be done with the stroke of a pen yeah. by the president, but I, I don't see that happening right now. Right. All right, Steve, we're going to have to leave it there. That Thank was a you. great update. Appreciate Thank you. you coming by again. Love we'll coming see you next around. time. Thanks, Thanks. James. See you. Well, there you have it. The I got to tell you. The juju. The juju going to fly. Like, how many? I mean, are all the shares in juju free trading? Because, because, you know, and I know they, they got rid of a lot of the shares, but there's still 300 million shares. Fully diluted. There's 172 million in the float. Uh, how much of those are free trading versus how much of those are escrowed? How much of those are subject sure. to lockup agreements? Sure. I can't find any evidence of what is what, and so I just assume they're all free trading. But... You know, I'm starting, the last, the last two press releases are starting to very sort of, they're basically doing what they said they were going to do. And so if they keep up with that, then there's a good chance that I think, you know, full disclosure, own a boatload, but I think it's, I think it's, I hope it's going to do what it's going to do. C-R-O-N, this thing's wild, it bounces around, but... I, I don't know. I get a feeling, and, and we're getting closer and closer to D-Day, are we? Uh, what do you mean by d -day? You mean the 17th? Yeah. 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 Let's pull up a chart on Chrome, because I'm starting to think that this thing should be bought at the bottoms, ridden to the top, and sold. And then, cause they, it it, goes, yeah, it's there's a, a range, range there. There's yeah. a, let, let's take a look. So we're going to go... I'm going to say that range is somewhere between, say, 13 and 17. Now let's look at one month. It's definitely bouncing. Okay. The upper end of this range is 1776. The lower end of the range, 1481. That's not really the spread. No, well, here's the, the lower end of the range. Yeah, here. right there. there. There's the low end right there. That's $13. Yeah. Is it? Nope. What is it? Here's the low. 1280? 1177. So right now it's at 1481. Yeah. So it's in between. Right now you kind of, you wouldn't want to do anything because it's just as close to one. Let's look at three months. Okay, so there's the range. There's the volatile range right there. Yeah. Right across the bottom. Slight, there. slight, uh, I like this, you know, when the lows are higher. So we got a higher low. Well, higher low. Higher low, higher. lower high. <laughs> Liar ho. Ho or lie? Hody, hody ho. Hody do. Hody do. Hody do. Hody do. Hody do. Hody do. I'm trying to get through. I'm trying to get through the dough. Oh, long All distance right. information. Let's take a look at Try our. Try to uh, get to me, me. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, a lady named Face said she could do without the singing. Well, you're singing. Well, First no, I think she meant my. <laughs> I see. She, she's talking about my James, singing. I got it. Please, yeah, please. Yeah. Have you ever heard such? Oh. A, James, James, I have to ask you a very sincere question. Have you ever heard such a mellifluous voice? Mellifluous voice coming mellifluous. up your ass. I have. So, so. <laughs> That's what you were talking about. I oh, know. your singing voice. Oh no, of course, right. Mellifluous. Okay, there's a word for the viewers. Mellifluous. Mellifluous. Fluous. Mella. Mel, Mel, Mel being the French for honey, sweet flowing. Miel, 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 fluel. <laughs> no, but isn't it malfluous? <laughs> malodorous, <laughs> my stinky. Hey, to go along with singing. your malodorous, <laughs> malfluous voice is your malodorous breath. I don't like the cut of your jib, Mister. Hey, Mister. Hey, Mister. Uh, 
Looking at the small cap index, so far today we're at 15 minutes from the close and we're down 2.64%, 1266.32 on the Midas letter small cap. Cannabis Composite Index, all yeah. the Canadian listed companies yeah. trading yeah. between yeah. 100 yeah. and yeah. Wow, Namas the nasty, nasty. You know that the problem with this index is, is like it's, it's, uh, it's weeks before fully one third of the constituents are either on the wrong index or should be moved to another one or have somehow changed their capital market, their capitalization profile so much that they just don't belong there anymore. Like I'm looking at huge is on the small cap index. The adjustment date is September 30th this month, this year, this month, and huge is going to be on the large cap index with the so likes of. Huge has sort of moved into the pro game. Well, it has just by virtue of its valuation become a Bit unicorn. of a monster? Unicorn. Let's look at this. Would you hit the drop down here? 1.32 billion shares out. Market cap 950 million. Wait a minute. Okay. Now, something. Yeah. Okay. So we, yeah. So it, it, 70, it was. It was up to 90 cents. But, but now look at. Can we just say here? Look at. Let's take a look. You want to look at the chart? Yeah. Look. Look at. We got. We had. The, this is a very complicated thing, but there is a definite trend here, and we took it. In, we got a new high. But just barely, barely took out that high, and then you got a bit of a wick, nice Big tail, wick. and here Thank next you. day, yeah, not exactly a nice candle, a red one, and yeah. then another red one, and another red one. Now that we may see a bounce back here, it looks like, get that big tail, yeah, tail matching the wick, yeah, you know, but this, they definitely haven't rolled up the carpet yet. Uh, listen. You know, Cantab, who we talked to a little earlier, they have their operations look at, at Look at this thing. This FSD thing, we saw that we see again. In we get that sideways Twitter. action, and then, boop, <laughs> boop, nice volume. <laughs> and you're thinking, okay, well, that's the end of that. Oh, contraire. How about? Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you, that's impressive. That's impressive, all I, right. I think we both <laughs> have to agree. You know, there's a few guys making a few bucks over there. A few shillings are being had. Yeah. Well, you know what? The Weekend Unlimited is coming up trading soon. Thank God it's Friday. They did TGIF and they also did the Supreme Cannabis Company. And they so got, and, they, and, and this is the YOLU, LOLU? YOLO will be the symbol Yolo. on the CSE. YOLO, you only live once. You only live once. Yes. Is that what uh, Mr. Stadnick came up with? Uh, I'm not sure who is the author of that symbol, but uh, I would suspect it's probably Anthony. <laughs> hey, you know what she said about I the know, singing? She head. said sing, not yodeling. <laughs> so yodeling. I good. distinctly heard you say you're singing. A, that's why from now on. So let me ask you this: Everything's going to be a yodel. Is your singing mellifluous, or is it more malodorous, or malevolent, or just? Plain mal. Just cantankerous? Cantankerous. Well, you can be a cantankerous. I got a, I got a canker, so it's can cantankerous. <laughs> I don't want to hear about your canker. I got to eat it yet today. <laughs> you got to eat. I got to eat. Everybody has got to eat. eat. Man's got to eat. If you don't eat, guess what's going to happen? You're, you're going to shrink. <laughs> you're gonna, or you're going to get thin. The incredible shrinking man. Thinner. Thinner. Like paint thinner. Um, all right, so I just can't stop looking at FSD, but let's go look at some of these other. Okay, well let's let's look at uh, let's see what went down today in the large cap space. Let, let, let's get, maybe we we put, bring up look at oh look at this the Every, large cap index is, is showing up, but seven of the ten are down. And, and you know why, eh? Because the the waiting for this little fella right here canopy. Look at that sucker go. Up 0.79%. 7 That's a flyer. Yeah. Aurora. 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 <laughs> Looking pretty good. One of our associates thinks it's going to $20 pretty quick here. You know what I think? I don't own it. Do you own it? I want to own it. I think I might own it again. I like the, I like the action on the Golden Ridge here, to be honest with you. A little bit of a tickler. Let's, yeah. put up, let's put it up. Let's put up the... Why that yeah, later? Let's put it up later. Yeah, after we've filled our boots. <laughs> Look at hemp. Hemp was here at a buck thirty-five. Is, is hemp related to shemp? On the Three Stooges? 
Shemp? Who's Shemp? Shemp took Moe's place. No, really? Curly's place. I never knew that. Larry Moe and Curly. Curly, Curly Larry died. And Mo. Curly died. And Curly they brought died. in Sh Hemp. Shemp. Shemp. Yeah, Shemp. Oh, I've never, I don't think I ever saw that. Oh, I remember Shemp, yes. Yeah, Shemp. Boy, that's an what old a, show. You know what, I gotta tell you. What do you if I had to, I, if I had to come back as another, I'd like to come back as a shimp. As a shimp? As a chimpanzee? A wimp. <laughs> a shimp. A shimp. A shimp. <laughs> All right. Who writes your? Who's your? Who writes your material? My mother. So seven and, and out of ten are down over here. Let's right, go let's back. Go, let's to, go. Let's uh, try. Let's try to, to keep this on track here, Ed. All right. We'll try to keep it on track. Look for it, down, minute. down, down, up. Why is that up? Why is that up? Well, Ed, it's up because there are more buyers than sellers. No, we don't. No, but <laughs> didn't we just <laughs> no, see, see that most of the components are down? Most of the constituents were down, yes. But because this one's weighted according to market cap, and you know, let's let's go back and look here. If we look at Weed's market cap. Uh, let's punch the symbol in here. We'll look at the Canadian market. Okay, here, okay, here. Afria Inc. among most shorted stocks on the. Big Don't read anything. Ed. Okay. <laughs> so look at right now. The market cap is showing here as fifteen point six two billion, but that's not taking into account the fully diluted market cap if all of the programs execute that they have with Constellation. Then you're talking, well, at seventy bucks a share, you're talking over thirty two billion dollars. So, uh, fully diluted. Yeah, so that's uh, so okay. Even I've now, been fully it's polluted, billion. But never fully diluted. Who writes your material? <laughs> I'm thinking They're, nobody. They need a job. <laughs> they, okay. All right. Let's go. So let's carry on and look at some of the other uh, indexes here, since we are here to talk about cannabis. I want to see what's going on in the CSE. Okay. Of course, huge is right there in our face again. Largest. Yeah, yeah down ten percent. Liberty Health flying. Yeah, crop. We don't care about crop. Canada House Wellness Group up fifty-one percent today. That's amazing. Global High Hamptons made the list. High Hamptons, back in the back in action, baby. High Hampton up sixty-two cents. Look at this. Planet Thirteen is now two eighty-eight. Like, do you remember what that was trading at when the, we did the interview with that guy? Here, look at this chart. Come on. Do you like stairs? I'll, I'll take the stairs. I'll take the stairs, please. Thank so you. So you know what? Here's that little, you know, break out of the pattern. Yeah. And when, when the pattern, when you get the break out of the pattern. Yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah, another one that got away. But quite interesting. Let's see. All the uh, all the wow. ones that are up on the CSE are kind of unknown. Prevceutical. That thing's run by a maniac out on the west coast. There's my phone. Liberty Health Sciences, a buck forty-four, up another eleven point six three percent. Here's another one that's on a serious breakout, starting to take control of the, taking to tr taking control of the action edge, taking control. Yeah, that's a nice little chart, eh? Oh yeah, buck forty-four. Wow. You know, I think Chiron's getting ready to do something. Have you looked at Chiron lately? No, but I got a funny feeling I'm about to. <laughs> yes, that's a good call. That's a good call. Where'd our sidebar go? It's so weird they're not there on that page. We have to go back here. But Chiron is not on the CSE, which is a mistake for some reason I always make. KHRN. Buck 72, down 5.49%. But look at that chart, eh? What is that showing you, Ed? Well, there's definitely, you know, break, uh, break out of the action. Is that I making mean, your pecker a little perky? <laughs> <laughs> is, that get, is that putting some wind in your sails? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can stand up right now. <laughs> Without your third leg. <laughs> Jesus. Anyways, but what do you think of that? Like, well, I'll tell you what I think. It, it was having trouble getting through a dollar. All of a sudden, look uh, the volume if down I'm not here. mistaken. Uh, look, at, look at the volume down here. Fuck okay, this. Leafia Health rises again on cannabis. Eat, there you go. So, so, so look, look. <laughs> That's a good one, Ed. Soft. Anyways, whoop, what Increase happened? in volume. Didn't Donnie single this one out and said, 
Like said if, it was if, getting if, ready to bust the, out. If the one in Uruguay was worth that, what they were worth, then yep. this is worth so much even more. Yeah. So much even more. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. CSE Index. Okay, Puff let's... Ventures. Look at that. Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy. Okay, we've looked enough at the CSE. Let's go look at another one now. Let's check out the Canadian Venture Index. So these are all the TSX Venture listed companies on the Canadian Index. And Organogram, like, whoa, 684, down another 12 cents. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, but that's only down a 2%. I don't think that's... Let's take a look at their chart because that seems a little bit... It seemed like it was, look at that, a storm of red up there. That, that, I got to tell you, though, I, this action in here, doesn't that look a little toppy? Like you had a break, test, the test failed, and now you got this. I don't like this, this uh, top, this is a top looking. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm just, you know, again, this is not talking about. Okay, let's take, take a look at it in the uh, technical context here. Because I'm interested to see if you're. Yeah. Representations are supported by a more technical picture. Well, you know, look at if you if, if you see that the trend in the Bollinger Bands is towards narrowing. One, the RSI is in a sweet spot at 52. Yeah. Fine. Basically, neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Hey, but look at Golden Ridge. All all flying here. The 200-day moving average. Soft. <laughs> is uh, you know. You know, you know what, trend. David Bowie actually, that song, Golden Years, he actually wanted to... Golden Years, Miss Pond, Miss Pond, Miss Pond, I believe it all, I believe all the way. I was golden rich, bum, 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 Tension span, no, no. Okay. Anyways, okay. look at Ianthus is moving up. Okay, Eight that, that killed now. another minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's two minutes. Two minutes till the stock market closes. Uh, over here. Right, I want. I want to close it today. Can I close it today? That's, sure. Let's look at GWC. I want to see. You know what would be really nice if we could see some evidence that the market was closed. Something that maybe Tangible. would pop up on the screen, like a bell or something. Something would go ding a ling a ling a ling a ling We got that. No, we don't. We got no. that. Yeah. No. Well, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Well, well, where do you see? Do you see Ten a bell? Ten seconds before the bell, I don't it's going to pop up there. I... Okay. <laughs> Trust me. I, I want to see this. Trust me on that one. I want to see... Uh, oh, minute 27. Still let's no take bell. A look at, let's take a look at Rivers, shall we? Rivers? Canopy Rivers are one of our most recent clients. Who has been taking it on the chin a bit, but is rebounded today up 42 cents to 703. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Now, That's Rivers is a portfolio of investments. First green flagged, green candle today, first green one. Yeah. Yeah, minute four, no So, bad. does that tell you that? Uh, well, look, but look, the volume's. Yeah, dried you, you right know up. what? You know what? There's not enough evidence there. I don't. You this know, one's you know, too you soon know. to call? Look, well, would you buy it, Ed? No. Well, probably not. Only because they just gave it to their 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 good clients at three fifty, and they said, "Ed, for you, you can pay seven. <laughs> I'm not so sure. Well, so you think this one's better days are ahead of you? Know what, when, the stock market's one of those few places that they seem to get more buying as it goes up in price, whereas everything else in this world, the lower the price, the more buying you get. Hmm. Just saying. Hmm. Okay, here we go. 24 seconds. <laughs> All right. You're looking yeah. for that bell, aren't you? Uh, no, I don't think we're going to see any bells. <laughs> if we do, I'll be the first to, you know. Ring it. 11, Ring 10, it. 9. Where's the bell? 8. Yeah, I told you. thought the bell, we'd see the bell. Okay, I want to see the bell. I think I they're having see... a bell malfunction in there. Yeah, mark it. Oh, ding, 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 ding. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and a ding, 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 ding to you. Okay. Four o'clock, people. The market is closed. We're going to check in with our Southwest correspondent now, Justin B. Marshall. Ed, and all our Midas Letter friends around the world. 
Today we have the privilege and honor of spending time with Aaron Johnson. Aaron Johnson is a notable cannabis attorney here in California, and he's really got a good finger on the pulse of what's happening here. Aaron, thanks for spending time with us today. Absolutely. What's going on here in Monterey County? Seems like a lot of action's taking place. Yeah, essentially what we've done is we've taken uh, dilapidated greenhouses uh, that were literally falling down as a result of the cut flower industry being decimated by NAFTA um, and repurposing these greenhouses. And we've got probably between, I would say, 6 million and 8 million square feet of, of uh, available space for cannabis cultivation. Uh, but a lot has to go into these greenhouses. But essentially what's happened is politically the board our local Board of Supervisors in Monterey County said um, if yes we will allow for cannabis cultivation but as long as you use these greenhouses that are essentially falling down and so it's created somewhat of a, a boom locally uh, in in terms of a somewhat of a land rush over the last three years or so um, and it's resulting in some very beautiful greenhouse structures being built where where you know, you had old wooden ones uh, literally falling down uh, just a couple of years ago. Are they being built or are they being retrofitted? Well, it's, you know, that's a good question. They're, they're being, for the most part, they're being built. Right. The retrofit is, is a, from what I've seen, the retrofitting is, is a, uh, it's kind of like a, a you know, taking a, it, a, the Band-Aid approach. Mm -hmm. um, it may help with some things, but what we're learning is we've got to deal with humidity in our environment. We've got to deal with, uh, you know, potential drift from pesticide, uh, you know, residue coming out from, from fields around us. So we have to have positive pressure. We have to have, uh, you know, more secure facilities in terms of structure than we did when we had cut flowers. By all means. So all means. Uh, positive pressure and a bunch of these other things are, are important infrastructure improvements that need to be made. And when you're looking at uh, the time it takes to either uh, retrofit or rebuild, a lot of times if you look at the pro forma, it makes sense to go ahead and say, we're gonna knock this down and put something new up because we think we can actually do it faster um, and end up with a stronger product at the end. Well, then you could therefore pass good manufacturing and good farming practices right. and, and be able to get these on a medicinal level right. at some point in the future if you uh, build it purpose-built, right. rebuild it purpose-built. Exactly. Aaron, I had a couple questions for you. Um, down here in Monterey County, I believe, oh, first I want to congratulate you on bringing the taxes down mm -hmm. locally. That's made a huge impact on the farmers here. Absolutely. Uh, it was, what was it before and what is it now? So we started off, in order to have a cannabis ordinance in our county, uh, the, the Board of Supervisors basically said, you know, here's where we'll grow, we'll allow you to do it, but so long as the voters say yes to a tax. Mm -hmm. uh, they initially set the tax at $15 per square foot of canopy. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, the, the uh, price per pound was roughly $1,800 to as high as $2,200 uh, per pound, uh, kind of on the, on the mass scale. And, uh, and we anticipated that we would be able to grow, you know, up to five uh, cycles in a year mm -hmm. when we were doing that. However, what we found is that we need electrical upgrades and some other things in order to actually produce five harvests in one year mostly because of the light that's required. Um, but at the same time, so we had a lack of yields in the, in the initial, the, the first year or two, mm -hmm. um, coupled with a drop in the price from $1,800 roughly to $600 to $800 per pound. So the metrics that were used initially to, to gauge that tax needed to come down because they were the effective tax rate was becoming, you know, thirty dollars to sixty dollars per square foot, and it was just infeasible uh, to do that. So, we uh, we actually worked with uh, with our Farm Bureau director. I'm a, a I'm a, on our board of directors for Farm Bureau. Yes. Um, they haven't officially sanctioned. You know, they don't. They haven't officially taken too many positions on this, other than they have been working with, uh, you know 
allowing cultivators to become members, etc. But we use their office uh, as a meeting place for growers. And so we get growers together to talk about what the issues are. And the number one issue that we found was taxation. Mm -hmm. So we worked on that. We were able to get the tax down to $5 per square foot, which has allowed us to uh, effectively operate and take risk, um, you know, in, in, and make sure that, you know, there are other things we have to, you know, you have to incorporate good farming practices and it's, it's becoming very competitive and, and you have to, you know, you have to act economically, uh, you know, uh, in an economically prudent manner from this point on, even with that $5 tax. Yes. So. Well, Aaron, I'm, I'm seeing that you're able to successfully keep your clients compliant. And that must be a difficult job with everything changing so fast, even on a daily basis. Certain right. pesticides or chemicals are being banned, you know, maybe next week. Right. And it, there's a lot of a catch-up process going on. Also, Aaron, I'm finding that, in my opinion, it seems like the farmers here are sitting ducks since there's no firearms allowed on the premises. And with the, you know, organized crime in the area wanting to break into these facilities, mm -hmm. you know, and, which I'm sure has happened time and time again here. Um, are there security measures that can be put into place, like allowing some of our veterans to watch out for these? Um, I, we interviewed a gentleman last week named Shea with Divinity Security Services. Mm -hmm. And him and his comrades from the forces are, you know, watching out for these facilities. Right. Yeah, there's, there, we've had some discussions about whether you can have firearms around the grow mm -hmm. because, you know, what the law says is you can't have them or at least what the Cole memo had said is you cannot have firearms in the grow. So there's been some interpretation, uh, you know, issues or discussions right. about, well, wait, that doesn't, you know, we're talking about the perimeter. Right. And um, it's an interesting subject. I've, uh, my clients vary greatly on this issue. Some of my clients uh, basically say, we don't want firearms around mm -hmm. if they come in take it we've got cameras we'll try to take pictures mm -hmm. and and you know we minimize loss of life or anything like that or, or damage mm -hmm. uh, to the extent possible and uh, you know run if you have to that you know as you see problems uh, don't confront sure um, and then we've got others that believe that the deterrent is to have guns at the perimeter so that people know, uh, you know, that they're they're armed and they are deterred from going to that facility. Having all the facilities in one general area, like we do here, mm -hmm. seems like the neighborhood watch program is working pretty well too, where everyone's able to watch out for each other. Right, it is. What I've found in every, I, I have, uh, I have three clients that have basically been uh, hit, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. robbed or whatever. Uh, one of my clients, uh, their staff was held at gunpoint and bound, tied, etc. cetera. Uh, and when, in each of the cases I've ever heard of, when you dig deeper into it, it's all an inside job. I heard that too. There is no, there, there's virtually, I don't want to say there's no way, uh, it's highly unlikely for a gang or for any uh, crime unit to go, you know, in guns blazing without knowing what's happening inside the gates. Absolutely. And so uh, a lot of times I've heard that that comes from the trimming crew and right. they will actually pay people that are working for the trim crew to identify where the weak spots are in, uh, you know, in a security system. Yes. Uh, and so that's more of, I, I think you're better served at, uh, as, a, as, a, as a, you know, a business to understand who your employers, your employees are, don't just get the cheapest uh, labor crew. But isn't it contract labor? Isn't it through a, a, another company that brings in the, the daily laborers to trim? It, it depends. Some of my clients hire their trimmers and they move them around gotcha. and they, they're perpetually harvesting. Gotcha. So there's, they're okay putting all of those people on, on their books as their employees and they've vetted them and they know who they are and they trust them. And a lot of times they'll, it'll be friends of friends and, of, and families and you know, you, you know who those people are. Sure. Uh, the ones that take the shortcuts are the ones that get burned in the end. It seems so. Aaron, you came from a, a winery background. Mm -hmm. 
are you seeing wineries moving in, like Coppola Winery, for example, moving into the space and big alcohol too, into the local cannabis space? I don't necessarily see the, I mean, we, we all hear about the stories of, of Coca-Cola or the, these large beverage, mm -hmm. uh, you know, companies, uh, Constellation being one of them, that's, they're huge in the wine world. Um, I expect them to be in the market for sure. Uh, I think that we're a ways away from an established, uh, you know, consolidated market. So I, I think we have a lot of mergers and acquisitions that are ahead of us, a lot of branding, and I think it's a, it it presents an excellent time for those that are that are, uh, you know, currently invested and currently operating to build your brand and build something that is attractive to uh, to some of these companies. But I don't see this changing overnight where it's big tobacco, big ag, you know, that type of thing. Right. Uh, I'm finding that the cannabis industry is actually changing the pharma industry, not the other way around. Um, right. Cannabis is really taking a huge step, is disrupting other, other areas, and we all know that. Aaron, um, what can I ask you about this? With the outdoor farming of cannabis coming online soon, Will this be disruptive to a lot of the indoor grows, or are we going to get Appalachian grows? Are we going to get small grows, or is it going to be large-scale outdoor cannabis? Yeah, I, I think there are so many corollaries within this in industry to the uh, to the wine and vineyard industry. Yes, uh, you know, from Appalachians to small label, high value wine, you know, wine labels or wineries to uh, two buck chuck. Mm -hmm. And you know, large producers at at, at a decent quality, at a low cost, yeah. um, uh, and I see all of that starting to evolve. I look forward to having Big Sur come online in in as outdoor growers. Yes, uh, they are. You know, they're the heritage of the industry. They're they have a legacy, and uh, but I expect the numbers in terms of square footage because of the environmental impacts in the hills and things like that. I expect the, the overall numbers and yield ultimately to be a, uh, you know, less than significant compared to all the other grows that are around California. I understand. So I think those, like, I think there's an opportunity if you're in Big Sur to, you know, brand yourself and get one of those high value, low quantity type of labels mm -hmm. and product. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't see, even if you put them all together, I think the the percentage of yield would you know would be fairly small to com compared to what's happening in the Salinas Valley and other places. And sure. So, sure. I think there's an, it's an opportunity for them, and it, I don't think it interferes on anything that uh, people here are doing. I would like to ask you about: um, Do you see the banking solutions, practical banking banking solutions, coming online anytime soon here? Um, I, I, I definitely see practical banking solutions coming online, and mm -hmm. I do see that with current banks. I don't, I don't see the solution being a special merchant bank by the state or, uh, you know, or other fancy type of arrangement. And I've heard ideas from using, utilizing blockchain and, and you know, uh, other currencies mm -hmm. in order to make that happen. Are you seeing it? Are you, are you noticing I it? I hear yeah. the ideas, yeah. but I when you follow those through, there's usually something that's a, ultimately a, a, a major hurdle. Mm -hmm. And the timing of that is such that I believe that the, you know, the banks that we have today are opening up. They're, they're beginning to bank more customers. They started off with four or five here and there. Mm -hmm. And I think that they are going to open up when we get better technology that is developed between the bank and the merchant so that they're sharing information instantaneously mm -hmm. and that they are, uh, they're able to identify problems uh, quickly because the, the whole purpose, you know, FinCEN came out with guidelines that said, yes, you can, you know, our, our normal banks, you can go ahead and bank this. You just have to file suspicious activity reports. You have to do all these other things to comply. And they've been toying with that, learning how to comply, making sure everything's okay, putting their toe in the water. Um, I think the next step is to develop, you know, uh, stronger technology that makes people more compliant. And I think that what we'll see is that technology will help 
in the permitting system, it, it just helps companies remain in compliance altogether. Sure. Well, one last question now for you, Aaron, is do you see a possible solution for a crop loss in the future where farmers could be reimbursed through insurance? I mean, I know there's a lot of loss out there from powdery mildews and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. what, what can farmers do in the future to protect themselves? Over-insure themselves. And uh, insurance is a possibility for yes, them? Yes, insurance is definitely a possibility. Um, you know, whether or not it's your traditional A-rated insurance yeah. is another issue, but uh, it's incumbent on those that are getting insured to read their policies, for one thing, to see what they're actually covered with. Um, but in, in a nutshell, there is insurance available for crop insurance. There's overall umbrella insurance, mm. you know, a lot of things. Uh, I think they would even cover theft um, in those circumstances. But you just, it, it all depends on your policy and gotcha. making sure that, and you have to go to the right broker as well to, that knows what the product is, what the client does, and, and what the insurer ultimately will, will cover. Some people are saying federal legalization might happen as soon as three months from now, you know, maybe to push another agenda through the White House. Mm -hmm. Do you see this as a possibility? Uh, think, or do you think it's going to be a lot longer? No, I think, uh, to be honest with you, I, I see that when we get past the midterms in the U.S., uh, I think that there's nothing that, that nothing but organization and time within Congress and the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd be very surprised just based on those parameters mm -hmm. on whether or not the Senate and Congress could get together and, and, and fix this in a matter of three months. I think that would be, uh, that would be shocking, but uh, well received. Yeah. Uh, but I think once we get through the midterms, uh, they're gonna, going to want to act quickly on this. And, and I think you know what we'll find is that the the big discussion will be what what are what are the feds allowing you know ultimately is it just medical is it is it medical and adult use things mm -hmm. like that i think those details obviously need to be uh, vetted well it certainly seems like the wild west out here where a lot of people are opening uh, delivery services with no license you know and people are online services you know and and I don't know how the people are going to be able to compete at this level, well, you know, with, with the black market. It just seems like it's a, it's a tough deal. The black market's really got a foothold. Yeah, it does. But there's, there, you know, with our tax dollars is, uh, you know, they are focusing enforcement on the black market. And so that's a very positive thing for us in, in the legal world. Yes. Um, and I think the consumer, I think the, the black market will always be there. I mean, you'll have somebody who has 30 plants in their house. You know, I, I don't think you get, you're not going to get rid of them. They're going to have, you know, several people in their network that they continuously sell to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if it's worth going into that detail to take the, those black market actors out. Right. What we want out are the gangs, cartels, the uh, the large grows that interfere with with you know the black market. A lot of the stuff that's produced by those large black market grows is very dangerous. I mean, you could actually right. kill people with compromised immune systems. Exactly. So I'm very much pro the regulation and pro right. the stringent re requirements on testing. Right. To keep safety in place. Absolutely, and that is you know from a consumer standpoint, if I had the choice, that's exactly why I would go into a dispensary and buy cannabis versus uh, someone off the street because what, what the public is going to learn at some point is that they're, without those regulations, they are spraying you know, Eagle 20 and, mm -hmm. uh, and taking water and doing all these things. Mm -hmm. And so th you know, for that reason, I believe that the market will not accept the black market eventually yes. with, with more education. And I don't think the market's gonna accept bioengineered genetically modified cannabis either some of the stuff that's being grown in yeast or whatnot, but we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Right, um, I'm not a huge fan of that. I've, you know, I, I, I don't know much about that technology other than you know, we have a beautiful plant. It comes in a couple of different mm -hmm. uh, strains and varieties and, and uh, forms like hemp or you know, cannabis itself. Right. Right. And uh, you know, the whole movement behind this has been very organic and natural, and I don't see that changing much, especially with the market. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. Right. 
Well, Aaron, I know you got to get back to work. You have a busy day. So thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Absolutely. It's been thank a pleasure. You. Thank, thank you. you. James, Ed, and all our Midas Letter friends around the world, we'll see you on the next episode. Smoke weed every day. Thank you very much, Justin. Amazing as usual, so informative, eh? A lot of food for thought there. A lot of food. A lot of food. And we like your choice of suit. We're we're gonna come we're gonna come back. And, to and you know the fact that he's unshaven would suggest he's suffering not suffering but he's also has a a bit of the hirsutism. Hirsutism. Yeah. Like that's okay. Hirsutism. <laughs> like you said, nice suit. Yeah, nice her, suit. Her suit. Um, one of the companies I wanted to quickly point out here is uh, called Backstage Play, and. Uh, this is an interesting company that it's still like it hasn't gained traction with the market here, and you know what these guys do? Yeah. Now they're clients, so we're we're of course uh, conflicted here. But so these guys have this this tech uh, this platform where f famous people can uh, monetize and increase the engagement of their fan base by signing up on this platform, and they essentially gamify the celebrity. So you're a fan of the celebrity and to, you win prizes like backstage access to their concerts because it allows their engaged audience to Is that all you're getting to see Elton John tonight? Well, no, I'm playing piano for him tonight. Oh. Yeah. Wow. He needs a piano player. I'm his guy. And you're but, his guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to play the piano. Actually, I'm gonna, we're going to have backstage play make an app for us and we're going to gamify Ed and Jim so that our fans... Jim who? Jim, that's me. Oh, I thought you were James. Well, yeah, that too. You know, okay. Depends what I, what side of the bed I get out of. On. <laughs> what side of the ocean? Yeah. No. So. Uh, okay. So backstage play, and they get, you know, revenue share from the artist uh, sort of audience engagement. And I'm, it's interesting. So we've seen an increase in the volume here, and this is uh, this is where we started producing content around them. So I guess some people are sort of picking up the message, but it has yet to really get up ahead of steam. Today was a, a pretty good day. Uh, you know, it was up to 18 cents, but uh, it's got so much potential, I feel, which is why we engage them as a I see it traded as low as 13 cents today. Yeah. Well, wow. that's just it. You can buy this thing. And sell it. And sell it right away. Buy it <laughs> or and sell it. Buy it sell and it. hold it. Look at Canex, another one of our erstwhile clients, down to 85 cents. They were supposed to close that deal with Jetty Extracts. I wonder how that's coming along. We're going to have to give our friend uh, uh, Anthony Dutton a call. He's the CEO of that one. What else is going on here? I'm going to cut to the... Maybe we should look at Enbud. Oh, yeah, we got to look at Enbud. Enbud, I mean, you know what? We were talking about this yesterday. Enbud, we can't really look at a chart because it's been only trading for like... Yeah, uh, it's not, but, but I mean, look. But what's that? Up 78.79% on the day. But look, there's only three days trading. Yeah, but look at that. I mean, Three days you, down and then boom. But that's too much of a rush for three You know what? It, let's say you pick up uh, three or 400,000 shares this morning at uh, 34 and you sell it at 50. What's wrong, what, what is wrong with that program? Well, that would have been quite talented and quite insightful, but uh, yeah, you could have been in and out of that thing in a single day. Traded how many shares? 3.8 3. Uh, million, 3.7 million. Uh, that's true. not all of them. No. But uh, yeah, there's us, watching us, watching them. They better hurry and close that deal so I can retire, says Zach Norman. Don't know what he's talking about. Wow. Backstage play. Oh, yeah, he's, he's on the backstage play thing. <laughs> Sounds like a porno. Good one, Zach. Yes, it does sound like a porno. Um, but let's take a look at the action in all of our markets today. And what have we got? The movers and the shakers. Biggest mover on the TSXV today. Namaste. Down 61 cents. Wonder what happened to uh, cause So that the red ones are down. No, they're up. <laughs> the look green at, ones look that at, are down, Ed. Your top. Look at Namaste down. Look at Alifia up eighty, up twenty-eight percent. Wow. Yeah, that that's, doesn't that's make a, any that's sense. That's a big boy. 
That makes no sense. That thing was sucking hind tit not so long ago, and look at her now. Ripping! It's ripping, Ed. Look at patient old monitor here, 15 cents up a half a penny. Wow. Flying. Wow. Flying. Flying. Yeah, so look at that. In the in TSX Venture, look at the top 10 names, most of them aren't even cannabis. Look at the volume on uh, Namaste one, and Leafy are almost the same. One, two, three, four. Oh, Oxley down to buck 18. That thing's pretty volatile. Eve down 48. That's one I was playing. Fire is down. Relentless Resources. That one's trying to become cannabis, I think. Look at high blockchain, 61 cents and crumbling fast. Man. And where, where is, oh yeah, the 60, yeah, look at that, eh? Look at Martello, was on yesterday, down seven cents to 55 cents today. Bruce needs to come on the show and talk about Martello. Don't, don't give us the CEO, send us Bruce. Yeah. I'll make it fly. Chiron Life Science is down to a buck 66. You know, that thing's getting ready for some big moves, I think. I would say, I would say. Now well, let's go see what's happening on the TSX. Who's that trading on the TSX? Royal Nickel shed 35% today on 64 million shares after touching a high of, well, today's high was a buck five, but yesterday was a buck 14, wasn't it? That, that's the one where they f suddenly found the 15, 9,000-gram nine well, nine yeah, yeah. of gold per ton boulder. That just happened to show yeah, up on their yeah. nickel property. Just, you know what? Hey, we want to get rid of this property. We don't see any potential here. But then let's take one more look. What do they do? They find a 9,000-gram boulder. Now, this is the problem with boulders. That could have come from a long way from their property. <laughs> could have come from someone's back pocket. Could have come from the bucket of a backhoe after being unloaded from a dump truck. Is from that what you're suggesting, Ed? Are you bucket. calling into question the likelihood of replication on this boulder over the shoulder? Over the shoulder boulder holder. <laughs> I don't know why that still makes me laugh. I was I a know. kid when I first heard it. Over the shoulder boulder holder. It's a great one. Cantrust is up 25 cents today, 12.58. Two million shares. Love it. But uh, yeah, pretty... Uh, yeah, and Royal Nickel down 35. That's, that's a bit yeah. of a kick in the... Yeah, kick in the... La Bonza. <laughs> la Bonza. What the hell's a La Bonza? Well, that's a little bit like your, 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 your snout. I see. Kick in the La Bonza. And let's take a look at the CSE. Now, this is including things that aren't cannabis, but there's really not much to say about it. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, 38 had a huge huge down day eight cents down or ten percent off yeah ten percent off I like to think of it that way yeah yeah uh, yeah 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 see who lost yeah. the most by percentage no oh, you can't do that well I think luck. I think uh, one of your big losers was Namaste today yeah but that was on the other page you're talking about this page look at North but North but there's your big winner up 78 Open Canada up house 33. Canada house Touched a high of 59. Wow. No, it was last at 59. Touched a high of 61. No, that's Micron Waste. North Bud. Oh, I can't see that well. Yeah, touched a high of 59 as well. Hmm. Yeah. Lots of great trades to be had. Yeah, but uh, you got to have them. To, to yes. That's at Friday night. Yeah, you, you, you sort of feel like, you know, what's wrong with me and my money? Like, I don't seem to be getting these trades, and yet nope. here they are every day, and we're yeah. on the show. Well, I'm, I'm nailing them. I'm walking them out of the park. <laughs> At least in my own mind. <laughs> Choom. I like Choom. Choom. Choo. It's like on the train. Choo -choo. Title royalty, 20 cents. Boy, that one didn't really pan out for the boys, did it? Not yet, anyways, but Not never yet. count those you, boys you out. Never, you never know. They just got to back up the big promotional train to it. You know There's why it's not trading? It's because they're all over at FSD. They got a high Hampton up 60, 62. There's a nice little action. Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't that interesting? That was, that's the last item on the list there, high Hampton. Last but not least. Marifarm. Look at that. That's not done so well. Marifarm. Where are you seeing Marifarm? Second from the bottom. Oh, well, okay. In the white. Nope, didn't do much. 20 cents. Boy, that thing's really sucking hind tit. You like that phrase, don't you? I do. It's your third I like to. You only lose it three times. I today. know. I know. 
Edward, but uh, we're going to call it a show. That was you know, our I'm, big I'm, show I'm, for the day. I'm, we're going to see you all tomorrow. If you liked it, please tired. sign up. I'm tired. Ed's tired. He needs to go to bed. I'm tired. He's going to curl up in his little moving blanket. moving blanket. And call it a day. You know what? I'll so just don't forget to oh, subscribe. And yes. we'll see you all tomorrow. Nighty night now.